to shake things up a little, we're going to go now to some of our youngest voices, India's youngest voices rather. In our next session, we're going to celebrate three remarkable ladies. I'm going to tell you about each of their achievements. First up, we're going to have Geet. Geet is an aspiring astrophysicist. She's a young innovator. She's earned a full-time scholarship to the NASA space camp in the United States. She advocates very passionately for the Earth and for the climate. We're also going to have with us Namya Joshi. She's a Minecraft student ambassador by Microsoft. She's empowered more than 15,000 educators and students with game-based learning. She'll actually tell us a little bit more about that in this session. And we also have with us the fearless go-karter, Atika Mir. She's a bit of a go-karting prodigy, ladies and gentlemen. She's the first female to win the Rotax Challenge International Trophy. And today, as we hear again and again, the Gen Z is questioning the existing status quo. These three women are blazing the way. So let's just invite them onto the stage in conversation with Kanksha Swaroop, my colleague at CNN News 18. I'm sure you'll agree it's high time our young girls, little girls grow up knowing and believing that they can become whoever they choose to be. Astronauts, formula race drivers, coders, gamers or even homemakers. And I have with me today these three girl prodigies who are making me so proud that I'm actually honored to be sharing the stage with the three of you. Geet, if I may begin with you, what sparked your interest uh, in space exploration? And let me also congratulate you for participating in the NASA camp. That's a massive achievement at your stage. Let's have a huge round of applause. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. And first of all, I would like to thank the CNN News 18 uh, for giving me this amazing opportunity and this platform to convey my story. And I am also honored to share the stage with you. Thank you. We are deeply honored. But what actually sparked your interest in space exploration? Um, well, my father always says that books are your best friends. And when I was five, uh, we went to a fair and he got me uh, an encyclopedia which was uh, basically on space and planets and all that basic stuff. And so I got it home, I read more from it, and then I was like, yeah, I want to be an astronaut now. <laughs> how old were you? I was five. Wow, and how old are you now? <laughs> I'm 16. Wow, phenomenal. <laughs> Thank you. Now, Mia, how have you used Minecraft? as a learning tool because remember everybody's talking about it that you are this Minecraft student ambassador and let me congratulate you for that you. for being such a young coder and speaking to somebody who knows which about coding <laughs> how have you actually evolved Minecraft into a learning tool tell us about that thank you so much and again thank you so much for giving this lovely platform to you know engage with you all and um, about Minecraft, well, you can call me as one of those keen gamers back in grade four who used to play Minecraft for fun, exploring, you know, whenever I get my free time and playing with my friends. But something changed in grade five. I could realize that students in my classroom were not happy with the way we were learning because it was monotonous and it was just text-based learning. And I got this wonderful opportunity to train teachers at my school about how they could use Minecraft as a tool. And that's when I got the spark that if we could, you know, tell them how to use Minecraft, then they could use it as a tool in the classroom to engage us. And that gave me the inspiration to create my first lesson back in grade six. And that was of Egyptian civilization and history. So I gave it to my teacher, though I was a little apprehensive in the beginning, that would they accept because gaming has been stereotyped since the beginning that it's a distraction. But she agreed and we saw the result instantly. All the students were engaged, asking questions. They were becoming more inquisitive. And most importantly, I've learned this thing over time that 
our brain is designed in a way that it loves to play games. And we learn more visually than we just learn through text. And since I got the positive outcome, that gave me the inspiration to start training teachers, since I've been able to train more than 15,000 plus Do you now. think girl coders are more creative? Well, I agree, yes. It's been proven um, scientifically that girls are more creative. But what lacks is the motivation. Like, I got it from, like, I would love to thank my parents, my teachers, my school principal, Ms. Vinda Gokia, my grandparents for always being there as a rock behind my back. But what about those girls who have the inspiration around them, who have a lot of people to look up to? But what lacks is one push, that you have the skill, but you need to do it, you need to move forward. So just one push is what they need, and you can see them bringing a change in the world. And I'm very sure and confident that you'll be taking it to the grassroots, to all those girls who perhaps don't have the same kind of access that you do. Let me now come to you, Atika, fastest girl in the world, the first female race driver to win Le Mans International Circuit, all of nine years old, ladies. Let's have a huge round of applause. You're so little and your achievements are towering and tall. How does it feel to achieve so much at such a young age? Well, first of all, I would like to thank the Shri Shakti and the CNN News 18. And um, about the question, um, yeah, I feel really proud about winning the Lama. And I'm really proud for my country and my team for um, supporting me and, um, and about being the fastest girl in the world um, I, uh, under 10. I really um, appreciate my team and my country and all my coaches and my mechanics for all the support they gave me till today. And also you guys for supporting me for the Shi Shakti event today. So yeah. How does it feel when you enter the car before your race? Are you nervous? I am like very, very nervous. So like, I, I, I like think um like, um uh, like, are we gonna crash here? Are we like something's gonna happen? But um, when I'm actually like driving, I don't feel that scared anymore. So um, it's quite like nervous. Like it's like butterflies in your stomach. So you know, I want to tell you, I'm getting butterflies in my stomach while talking to you. Yeah, even How I should am. I calm myself down? How do you calm yourself down before race? Well, I do some breathing, so um, I get calmed down, and I tell myself, like, what to do before every race starts, so um, I get more confident, and I believe in myself. And I tell myself what I did in my good races, such as like the Le Mans win. So I remember all of those races, and I try to remember what I did to win that race. So um, that you make little notes in your diary, I believe. You yeah, I actually have a diary which um, helps me to remember stuff, since um, I forget stuff quite easily normally. <laughs> but. Um, I have a diary, like whenever I have to improve on something, like for example, I have to go faster in this corner, so I always write that down in my diary, so I don't forget it the next session I drive, so um, yeah. I'm sure those notes help you a lot. Yeah. Geet, tell me what is a NASA space camp like? What was your experience and what was the most memorable experience over there? Share with me one very precious memory from the NASA space camp. Um, well, first of all, it was nothing short of life-changing for me because it was a childhood dream, actually, that I saw at five years old. And now at 16, I got to experience what it's like to be an astronaut for seven days, but yeah. It was really memorable. I met different people from different countries, those who share the same passion as me about space and exploration. Um, my favorite, my memorable experience was uh, the multi-axis training chair, which is used to train astronauts uh, during the time of re-entry into the atmosphere. Uh, so they feel little shakes and their, uh, yeah, their bodies like, uh, uh, okay. So, I sat on that, and that is, I was guess, my... Was it a scary experience? 
No, really. it was not scary. It was so funny. I was laughing the entire time. <laughs> uh, yeah. It wasn't scary. I, I also had butterflies in my stomach at that time because the chair was spinning into 360 degrees. And yes, you can say it was a bit scary, yeah. You know, there's so much talk about SpaceX versus Boeing. Uh, I want to <laughs> ask you, if you ever were to venture into space, what would you choose, SpaceX or Boeing? I would go with SpaceX. Why? That's rather a personal <laughs> choice. <laughs> All right. Now, as a Minecraft student ambassador, what are the responsibilities that you were bestowed with and how have you contributed to those responsibilities? That is a really great question. Well, the biggest responsibility that comes with being a Minecraft World Ambassador is to inspire more people and to teach them about the wonderful, you know, opportunities of how you can use Minecraft as a tool to engage students and as well as teach them of how they could use it in the classrooms uh, for students as well. Um, you know, teaching for students like how they could use it for the teachers and help them. But also it comes with, you know, um, a responsibility of inspiring people to come forward, to showcase their skills, to not be shy, and to speak out their thoughts and motivate them. And while being one of the ambassadors, I got this, you know, keen chance of starting my own club called Girls in STEM. Well, this was because I, the first competition I won back in 2018 was with juniors uh, at the national level. And in the top 10, I was the only girl. And that was just made me curious that why do we not see much girls in the STEM field and in the gaming field. And you've used a motto of each one teach ten. Yeah. How have you used that motto to make a more valuable impact in your own journey and what has teaching these other girls taught you? Of course. So like beginning the club was, you know, just two girls and then each one teach ten meant that each one person can teach ten and the chain keeps on continuing and we create a ripple reaction of change of bringing those change, mater, change makers and those leaders. And now I can proudly say we have more than 100 girls in the club, we have a Discord channel, monthly meetings. It's just not me teaching them what amazing skills that I may have, but also of the skills that they have. So it's a platform for them to come, you know, to share their skills and get more motivated. And that's also how I, you know, got a chance to make more and more lessons, teach more people, and then never look back. Wonderful. More power to you. Atika, let me now come to you about the challenges, being the first female race driver to win Le Mans. That too, at this age, wouldn't have been easy. We've seen there are only boys on the track. Does it ever hit you that you are competing against boys? Um, it doesn't really like strike my mind at all because I believe like girls are the same as boys in all circumstances is that they have hair which doesn't affect them while driving. So I think if <laughs> I think like if they can believe in themselves and and I use like a trick while driving so which my coach says all the time to use and I think it's a really good trick. Uh, like. Like, they're all girls in the helmet because you can't see them in, in the helmet because, um, like, you wear a helmet which covers But you know, face. I also learned so that you do get bullied sometimes on the track. Is that true? Uh, yes, that is. So whenever I get bullied, um, I use that uh, on the track. So I use that, like, to move up to the, like, to the next level because I feel like how how it was while crashing so it it doesn't like matter that much to me because um i'm learning right now so i'm at a really young age and i have a lot of more steps to go and that's like including formula one and many other categories so right thank you for inspiring me Geet, since we are discussing challenges did you face any challenges at the camp or on your way to the nasa camp um, well, uh, it was actually the first time I traveled alone internationally, actually anywhere. My uh, parents did uh, come with me to the airport, but after that I was on my own. And I felt kind of really hurt uh, being alone. I am kind of homesick. But I'm sure when you returned you were yes, a stronger, yes, more yes. evolved person. Uh, definitely. After I reached uh, to the space camp, I met all those people and I 
I had not expected, but yes, I did not feel homesick at that time because all those people around me made a safe space to share our cultures and our opinions and everything. Uh, my biggest challenge was, yes, traveling alone and also uh, trying to find opportunities in this field because uh, there are not many. <laughs> All right. I want to ask, Namya, if you ever were to create a video game, what would that be and what would you let players do in it? Well, that is a really unique question. If I were to create a game, well, like, I love to do a lot of research on different things, be it politics or it's about game-based learning about STEM. So I think I would create a game where people could come on one platform and, you know, just uh, get the gaming element there where they have to, you know, go through different hurdles and then in the end they achieve the information. So, you know, you have to get all the, pass through all the hurdles and then you get the information in the end. And that also had the game-based element there. All right. And you learn. Atika, quickly, if you were to race against anyone, who would that be and which track would you choose? Um, I would choose to race against um, Max Verstappen or Lewis Hamilton, like um, if they would fit in my category and if they were at the same level. You know, Verstappen happens to be my favorite as well. Good choice. And which track? Um, maybe one of the tracks that I know because they're very experienced and they've driven all the tracks. So I would pick the one that I would like the most. So like Excellent. maybe the bike hard jump where I did my previous race yesterday and I finished sixth. So thank you so much. On that note, may your dreams come true, girls. And thank you for inspiring me today. I've learned so much. Thank you. Like the late Kalpana Chawla said, that the path from dreams to success does exist. She, in fact, embarked on one. More power to you girls. Thank you so much. Thank you, ladies. It was a pleasure being here. Thank you so much, Geet, Namya, and, of course, Atika.